we can certainly make a good use of, of this time. Um, as Loic already mentioned, my name is Rosie Rosario. I am the systems engineer that is aligned to the Benelux region. Uh, so essentially, I am the point of contact for any technical inquiries that you may have or any pre-sales opportunities. Uh, and we would like to take um, this opportunity to talk about one of our fastest growing platforms in our portfolio, which is the MB uh, camera. And so let me move to the next slide. Um, so in overall today, we're going to cover first the architecture of the physical security deployments. Uh, we are going to dive into the uh, Meraki cameras architecture and the philosophy behind this design. And we will touch base as well um, about the built-in intelligence of the camera and the partners that are adding extra value uh, to this architecture. And uh, we will finalize with a, a demonstration of the dashboard. And so um, if you think about what security cameras look like today, uh, it is actually not very different from the diagram that you see in the slide. Uh, you have an infrastructure comprised with video recorders, storage units, servers, uh, usually for video retrieval and for test flood configuration. And as you can imagine, this introduces a lot of complexity to the, uh, to the design, along with uh, hardware costs. You have uh, also infrastructure maintenance, um, as you usually have to install software packages uh, on a per device level. And um, there is not much flexibility in the way you interact with the cameras. So for instance, sometimes in order for you to review the live footage uh, of the camera, in most cases uh, with this traditional system, you will have to VPN into the office where the camera is hosted. Um, and also uh, when you want to uh, collect the old footage uh, for uh, sometimes an investigation or an incident, uh, most of the cases, you have that actually kept into physical tapes. And usually you have to ask someone to go to the site where the tape is, uh, is residing and get this tape and, and ask to restore the video and hope that the video file is actually not corrupted or damaged. So there are so many variables that, the, that can actually fail uh, in this process. And um, in the case of the, uh, with the MB cameras, the goal that we have is to take the experience uh, that we already have with the cloud infrastructure and translate this experience into the video surveillance. Uh, for us, for the engineering team, the, the idea is not to uh, just build in features just for the sake of building features, but actually to solve problems uh, that are actually aligned to the use cases of our customer. Uh, throughout the development process of the camera, we are always thinking about the, the customer. We talk to the customer in order to understand what are their issues. And with that in mind, we have built a wide range of cameras that are, that are doing just more than just uh, security in, uh, in our case. And uh, with the, uh, I will say that the MB camera is one of the only cameras that are actually coming from a cloud leader. And this is uh, really important actually to, uh, to make a stress on. Uh, because the amount of effort um, that is required to build a cloud infrastructure is not minimal, it's not easy. And the process from being a cloud leader to, to, to build a, a camera, a, a, an actual camera, is way more easier to go the other way around. So you may hear from older and more established security camera vendors that are moving to the cloud, but they are building the cloud infra infrastructure on top of something that was not built for the, for the cloud. And sometimes that is actually not efficient. And in our particular case, we have um, built the cloud from the ground up, and we have made this product around an environment that is already successful. As you know, we, are, we have already uh, built uh, uh, access points, uh, switches, and security appliances that are already successful in the market already. Um, additionally, uh, the cameras are actually managed to the Meraki dashboard, uh, which, uh, obviously makes it easier uh, for you to keep an eye of everything, whether you are on site or whether you are remote. Uh, in, in this case, you will only need access to 
an internet browser into internet and you are good to go essentially. Um, as well, the cameras have up to uh, 5, 12 gigabytes of solid state storage. They have, all of them have wireless and audio built in. And uh, in addition to this, uh, we have motion and schedule based detention policies. And this is essentially to optimize the number of days um, that um, you will have available for the footage in the camera. And finally, um, this is not just a security camera as, as I mentioned uh, previously, uh, but it, it can be actually used as a sensor uh, as it has uh, built in intelligence in order to present to the administrator analytics and usable data uh, that they can uh, take to, to make decisions, allowing them to, to use the infrastructure that is already available for the security, but use this infrastructure for the um, the sensor analytics as well. And um, now I would like to actually uh, deep into the MB Cloud architecture and what makes this product different from legacy systems. Uh, the first thing that I would like to clarify is that the cameras have local storage. And there is a common misconception that because this is a cloud-based camera, the storage is kept in the cloud. But this is actually not the case. And, and there is essentially a reason for that. Um, as you may imagine, like many customers deploy these cameras in sites where there is limited bandwidth and they cannot afford uh, to have a bandwidth, uh, the bandwidth that is required to actually to upload the video to the cloud 24-7. And this is something that it is not scale scalable in many of the distributed systems. And um, in terms of viewing the live streaming, um, we use an intelligent streaming system and we have two methods, methods essentially. Uh, the first one will be um, if you are local to the camera, that means that if you are able to reach the um, local IP address of the camera, whether you are local in the office or via VPN, uh, the camera itself will build a secure connection to your uh, computer, to your mobile device, and the live streaming will happen directly from the camera. And this translates to minimal use of the network resources. Uh, when you are remote, when you are in a public network, uh, essentially the video, the live video will be proxied by the cloud. And in both ways, either you are local or you are remotely to the camera, you are accessing the, the live streaming of the camera through the dashboard. Um, so there is no additional configuration involved for this to happen. You just need to access the camera and then the camera will figure out whether you are local to, to the device or you are um, publicly uh, on a public network, essentially. And the camera is uh, conscious about the bandwidth. If you are not uh, doing live streaming of the camera, um, the uh, expectation is that the camera will use less than 50 kilobits per uh, second of bandwidth. And in most of the experiences, we have seen even like 11 kilobits per second in average of usage of the um, of bandwidth. And usually this, um, this bandwidth is used for video indexation for the motion uh, based detection information. And this is quite useful for um, networking environments. And um, for us, uh, security is definitely a most. Um, the camera was built around security, and, and as I mentioned, we already have experience on this. We have built a security appliance, and this has gave us a strong foundation uh, for us to create uh, this uh, MB camera. And there are, um, there are a few ways uh, in 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 what uh, in how we achieve this security. First of all, is the video at rest. Uh, the video inside the camera itself is actually encrypted, and in most of the MDR systems, this is actually not the case. Um, secondly, uh, when you have video in in transport, when you are doing live streaming of the data, um, the footage, uh, the live video itself, is encrypted as well. Um, the first time that you are actually connecting an MB camera to the network, the camera do a provisioning process 
where uh, a publicly signed SSL certificate is actually installed in the camera. And this is something that happens in the background. It happens seamlessly, and you don't have to do any configuration uh, for that to happen. And lastly, the management of the data is actually handled out of band, and it is encrypted through the Meraki tunnel. And something important to note is that the, the, this encryption is actually on by default, and you don't have access to disable this. So it will be always, um, it will be always enabled uh, in the camera. And in addition to the local storage that it is available in the camera, we have an option that allow customers to load the videos into the cloud. Uh, we have partnered with um, Microsoft Azure in order to achieve this. And usually many uh, organizations do require to have additional storage, sometimes due to, um, due to uh, regulations or internal policies. And they need essentially the video to be stored for X amount of, of time. And with, uh, with the cloud archive, uh, essentially, uh, we allow the customer to, to record the footage either for 90 days or uh, 180 days at uh, 24 seven. And essentially this option can be enabled on a per camera basis. You may have cameras uh, that are business critical and you do need to store the video for longer time than others. So essentially you have the option to apply this additional license to an X amount of camera if needed. And uh, with that, um, you will be able to store the video for the time specified in the license. And with that being said, uh, this is the lineup for the MB cameras. We have a range of products. The first one that you can see in the slide is the MB32. Uh, this is our 360 uh, fish eye view camera. It's an ultra compact uh, camera. It's actually, it, it can be a handle in my hand. And with this camera, since it is 360 degrees, uh, you can enable the virtual reality. Uh, which allows uh, um, which allows administrators for retails or for warehouses to actually see the full environment of the of their sites without actually being there. Also, we have the MB12, uh, which is the lower end cameras. We have three models depending on how wide the video will be seen, and we have the MB22 uh, and 22X. Um, which is a multi-purpose camera. The 22 uh, and 22X are pretty similar. The main difference is that the 22X has um, up to 5, 12 gigabytes of storage, which allows the camera to actually record in high quality. You can actually record up to four megapixels. Um, and also we have the outdoor camera, which is the MB72 and the 72X. Uh, so this camera is actually rated for outdoors. Uh, so it can actually handle, uh, it's waterproof, it can, it's, it's, meant for, um, uh, it's meant for also rated for IK10+, uh, and it is, it is made for demanding environments, so for instance, lower or high temperatures. And um, in terms of um, licensing, uh, it's pretty simple. We have a one-to-one -one ratio for the license. So you just require obviously one license per hardware and the license is the same regardless of the model. So you will have a unique MB license regardless of the type of camera uh, that you have. With the license, you gain uh, three years of hardware warranty for all the models. And also you will have available um, all the software updates and the new features that are like um, every month actually released uh, to the cameras. And finally, you will have access to our finest uh, support team 24 seven. You can either raise cases through the phone, uh, through email or through the dashboard, which actually is uh, pretty handy. And so let's move on to the camera as a sensor. As I mentioned before, uh, the cameras were built with the customer needs and demands in mind. And so we know that the majority of the video is never watched unless there is actually an incident or an investigation uh, in process. Um, and so 
This is why we have taken the opportunity to add additional value on top of the traditional use cases uh, of the cameras. Uh, with the built-in intelligence of, of these devices, um, we can learn and provide more insights about the environment and, and to better understand the, the behavior of, of the people that, that is uh, within the coverage of the camera, as well as to trigger actions to other systems based on the outcome of the camera itself. And so keeping that in mind, some of the features that we have built are the vehicle detection for instance, which comes available with the MV72, the outdoor camera. And also we have the anonymized person detection, uh, which uh, can be used to understand the customer patterns within a store, uh, for instance. Um, in addition to, to, uh, to this, uh, we have the most motion search. Um, and essentially, you don't have to watch a whole video, uh, like an hour video of footage, for instance, to find a few seconds of motion. The UI, the user interface of the dashboard, uh, will show you the point in time where the motion was actually detected, which comes pretty handy. And in addition to this, you will have access to motion events uh, that will be essentially summarized in one single picture uh, where you can essentially see and follow the behavior without actually watching the whole video. And uh, in addition to this, we have the motion heat maps uh, where you can see the motion behavior over time. And finally, you have the object detection that I mentioned earlier, either for people detection for counting and for vehicle detection for the outdoor um, cameras. And uh, what you can see in the slide, these are some use cases of what you can achieve by default uh, with the dashboard without any additional integration. So for instance, for retail, um, you can have, you can trigger notifications when there are, for instance, three people in a certain section of a store. Uh, for education, for instance, you can trigger notifications uh, if there are students on a playground during class hours. And for public safety, uh, similarly, you can uh, determine whether there are people still in the building that is uh, uh, while you're doing an evacuation. And in addition to the insights that you have available by default in the dashboard, the customer can actually leverage their own dashboard customized uh, for their own use cases by essentially extracting the video analytics of the camera and inject that information to a third party application. And you can get historical aggregates, you can get snapshots, uh, you can get a real time feed of the objects and, and location as well. And in overall, uh, the MV camera is essentially a powerful hybrid between a security device and a sensor. So you will get the best of both worlds. So you have the surveillance security and you have the analytics, and then you have everything actually merged together with a minimum infrastructure and a centralized uh, management system. And um, in terms of the added value that can be uh, included into the camera with the third uh, party applications, we have several ecosystem partners that are actually working extensively to, um, to increase the value of the MB device. So for instance, we have some examples. There are, there are many others, but we have three examples here. So um, we can start with movement strategies, for instance. They are a, um, a partner that works with, not only with the MB, but also with the MR. And they show dashboards with video analytics, with fruitful analytics. And they essentially use um, the API from the uh, MV camera and also the MV sense as well. Another uh, powerful um, ecosystem partner that we have is Every Angle. Every Angle works exclu exclusively for the MV camera. They already have built in applications for uh, retail stores um, where they can show the footfall um, of the retail store. They already have applications for people detection, for warehouse intelligence, uh, and many others. 
or they can also build customized application depending on the use case of the customer in question. And finally, uh, we have VAP. Uh, VAP, similarly to movement strategies, they work with the MB camera as well as the MR wireless. And they, uh, they can show you a really powerful dashboard with video analytics um, and also uh, footfall analytics. They have built um, over 10 solution uh, applications in our marketplace. And usually they work with retail, uh, with hospitality and restaurants. So let me actually stop sharing my, um, my screen so I can show you some of the uh, built-in dashboards that these partners already have available. So you can see the value of the of these uh, of these partners. So allow me just one moment. Okay, I believe you can see this. Um, so this is a, a sample dashboard from uh, every angle. So as you can see here, you have analytics on the footfall insights, how many people is actually in the store, how many people have entered the store, what is the uh, bounce rate, uh, the waiting time of the people, and the conversion rate. Essentially, like how many people actually translated their translated to actually purchase. Also, they have a dashboard that is a uh, focus for warehouses where you can see uh, cell phone detections, for instance. You can see how many spillages have been happened uh, for in the time period. Uh, you can determine uh, if there are any suspicious behavior, uh, if there are any unauthorized bugs uh, in the um, uh, in the environment. And also for VAP, something that they recently launched was an application for uh, determining whether the people um, is um, uh, is actually uh, taking into consideration the social distancing uh, in this time that we are being um, essentially affected by the coronavirus. So as you can see, they determine whether there are people being together. And if that's the case, they will essentially send an alarm to the, um, to the administrator in order to amend that situation. So as you can see, it's really powerful what you can get out of the built-in intelligence um, of the camera. So let me uh, go again to the presentation. Okay. So as I mentioned, the, the MB cameras is, is actually one of our uh, fastest growing uh, products uh, for Meraki. And for the last year, we have launched over 20 different uh, features and enhancements to the, uh, to the camera. So the last ones, as you can see in the slide, are for instance, a schedule exports. Uh, you, are now, you now have the ability to create profiles for quality and retention policies. Uh, you have the ability to do uh, external streaming and you have access to video access logs. And a feature that was just launched three days ago uh, is RTSP. Uh, and, and this is a real-time streaming protocol. And essentially, this is a really powerful feature uh, for many customers that are actually transitioning from traditional systems. With RTSP, you will have actually the ability to take the live streaming of the camera and do whatever you want with it. If you want to store it within the existing infrastructure that you have for video storage, you can definitely do so. If you want to take this live streaming to, uh, to put it on a third party application uh, to, uh, to watch the stream, you can as well do so. And this comes really handy for um, organizations where you have a specific regulations where the, um, the footage has to be actually a store on-prem and it has to be a store for X amount of days and, and potentially like the cloud archive uh, may not be feasible for you or the number of days that you have available in the dashboard 
may not be feasible uh, to you. So this shows how powerful uh, is the MB camera and how, how fast this product is actually being enhanced um, over time. So now I actually would like to move on to the dashboard um, demonstration. So I will, um, again, stop uh, sharing the screen and I will move to the, uh, to the Meraki dashboard. So just bear with me one moment so I can show you the dashboard in question. Okay, so um, here, uh, this is the, um, the dashboard network for one of our uh, Cisco stores in San Jose, uh, California. Uh, so as you can see, this is not only a camera dashboard, this is a full stack um, a dashboard network. So essentially you have this uh, neat single pane of glass where you can actually administer all your devices in one single place. And in the case of the camera, uh, you'll essentially have access to see a nice overview of all the cameras within uh, the single network. And you can easily tell whether the camera is active or not, or if there are any specific alerts that are uh, maybe affecting the camera in question. And so if you go to one of the cameras, uh, in the video tab, you will be able to see the live stream of the camera in question. So you can easily uh, see the video, you can move uh, historically to the old footage of the camera, and we have natural language in the search. So essentially, let's say that you would like to, to look information for yesterday at 9 a.m. Essentially, the dashboard will place you directly into that specific sequence of time, which is really uh, handy, comes really handy. Also, in the video um, section, you have an option for you to actually do the motion search. So essentially, you can select a frame uh, of the camera and define a time where you would like to look for motion. At the moment, obviously, as you may imagine, uh, we don't have any specific analytics to showcase because all of our employees are actually working from home for over five weeks. Uh, but essentially, the essence is that you will be able to uh, detect any motion um, in, the, in the site. And also, in terms of motion, the, uh, um, the, the state, uh, this status bar of the camera will show you in yellow whether uh, if there is any motion detected. So you don't have to actually go through every single uh, day of the camera to see whether there is people moving. You can just go and see um, the specific yellow mark uh, to determine, like to see the actual motion that was detected during that specific time. Additionally, uh, you have option to share the video. So as I mentioned previously with traditional systems, you will uh, most likely will have to get access to a tape and to retrieve the video, and that takes time. But with the uh, MB, you can actually either share a link internally. This is, uh, this is a share within uh, administrators that have access to the dashboard. Um, you can also share a live streaming link uh, with people that don't have actual access to the dashboard. So you will define their email address and you will define uh, for how long this video will be uh, available for them. And finally, you have the option to actually export an MP4 uh, file of the video and you will just select the specific portion of time uh, that you would like to export. And this becomes really handy when you are uh, in a police investigation or investigating an, an incident, you can just like export this MP4 file and then just send this to uh, whichever entity uh, you are working with. Um, also, in terms of analytics, by default, the, uh, the cameras that I show you have built-in intelligence that will allow you to detect the number of people that have been um, detected during the time of video that you have specified uh, in the search. And also you can actually define different uh, zones in your cameras. So you will have the people detection actually based 
on the specific frame that you have already customized. Um, in terms of uh, settings, there are many settings that are available on the cameras. Um, uh, for traditional systems, usually for you to actually make rotations or zoom of the camera, you have to actually go um, physically to the, to the device and do it yourself. But with the MVs, you can actually do it electronically from the dashboard. Um, and um, you can either uh, make a rotation in some cameras where the zoom change is available, you can do zoom in, zoom out. And also you have the ability to create privacy windows for those sections that uh, for policy reasons are not allowed to, uh, to record. And finally, in this section, you have the option that I mentioned before that we recently launched, which is the external RTSP. By enabling this option, the dashboard will create a link, an RTSP link that you can just take. And with that link, you will be able to have access to the live stream of the cameras. And as I mentioned, you can store this live footage uh, to your own system and do which, uh, whatever you would like to, to do with this information. And so uh, within the settings tab as well, you have the quality and retention where you will be able to essentially create um, different uh, policies to retain the uh, video footage and essentially you can play around with this in order to get additional days of your storage. So you can either always um, record your footage, you can record your footage based on, on motion, for instance, or you can enable the specific areas that you would like to, uh, to record. So essentially this will only record on the selected frames and anything else that happens outside the interesting areas uh, the camera will just not record those. You will have the, this footage for the uh, areas that are, not, that are outside the interesting ratio, but this will be deleted after three days. And also, uh, in some cases, um, there, are, there are some uh, situations where you do not require to, uh, to record with full resolution. So you can actually play with that and change the resolution of the video in order to gain additional time uh, in the footage as well. And um, in terms of the analytics, as I mentioned, some of the use cases for schools, for retail, is that you can actually trigger alerts based on, um, based on the people detection uh, mechanism. And this is where you can achieve this. So you can either achieve this uh, based on uh, zones, or um, you can just enable this when there are like uh, people detected. And finally, you have the zones where you can actually create different zones within the same camera and then use these zones for the quality and retention as well. In terms of the uh, video uh, watching, you have an option, a really powerful option that is the video wall. Um, and essentially with the video wall, you can create layouts of cameras, different cameras in one single view. So you have up to 16 tiles that you can add to a single layout. So in this case, for instance, you have one layout for point of sale, one for uh, store all, one for management and so on. And essentially you can add different views of your warehouse, of your retail store, and you can take this and essentially showcase this into a monitor for, uh, for security reasons. And you can, as I mentioned, you can play a lot with the layouts because you have up to 16 tiles that you can add to, the, um, to each one of the layouts. And uh, not only that, but the cameras, they do allow you to have like granular access to the, um, to the cameras itself. So you don't have to actually give full access to the dashboard to a person in order for them to, um, to have access to the live streaming. Uh, in this section that you can see here, you can actually determine which particular access you would like to give uh, to the user in, in, in question. So for instance, for security guards, you can uh, have them to just access to uh, the live footage 
and you can select which specific camera or cameras you want this person to have access to. And this is really powerful because you don't essentially want to give a person that shouldn't have access to the camera to, to do any changes on the camera itself. And um, uh, finally, for the cameras, you have the video access log where you can uh, essentially see uh, over time what uh, has been done for, uh, um, to any particular camera. So either you have a person that has viewed the live streaming through the cloud, if a person has done any exports of files. And this is important because imagine that you are not under an investigation or you are not doing any uh, incident um, search. So uh, you can actually uh, it, um, you can actually determine whether there are people doing any suspicious activity by just looking at the video access. Uh, and so in terms of demonstration, I think this covers most of the uh, features uh, that the um, security camera has available for you uh, through the dashboard. So I will uh, pass um, this to my colleague Lloyd uh, to continue with the presentation. Thank you, Jose. Can you hear me okay? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you. It was, I think it was very, very insightful. Uh, I learned a, a few new stuff, um, including the R RTSP, uh, which is actually um, very new. Uh, thank you very much. Um, today, so uh, with that, I think uh, we hope to actually give you already an insight of how powerful uh, the MV camera, in my opinion, is the, the most advanced product uh, in the in the in the Meraki uh, in Meraki stack. Um, I also would like to mention and to point out um, uh, that we uh, at Tech Data we are very much specialized in Meraki. Uh, as for myself, I'm a Meraki master, but and also a Meraki 360 trainer. But we see also um, that we have. Um, three, uh, four other people that also hold certification badge. Uh, so very, very uh, insightful uh, there. Um, I'd also mention uh, about a little bit about the Meraki 360. Uh, we at Tech Data we invested uh, quite a lot on Meraki uh, devices, um, and these uh, includes uh, labs uh, with the MX, the MS, so the MX, the security appliance, the switching, the Meraki access points, uh, the MV cameras, and the iPads. Um, so we can actually test it. Huh? We can set up a full, um, a full network from uh, from A to Z, uh, working on SD1, VPNs, SSIDs, and so on. So. Um, the great thing about it is that we can also do it uh, remotely. So if you are interested in joining one of those Meraki 360 sessions, just let us know and we can set up a lab for you and remotely from the comfort of your home uh, safely, you can actually start the labs. Uh, so there is a first a training on the Meraki uh, stack um, and then the labs uh, that you can do it from home. So, um, Rossi, can you go on the next slide, please? Yep, can you go on? Yeah. Uh, another aspect that is very, very important, um, please use and abuse the C-try-by. It's really uh, when trying, when testing, that you can actually learn and love the technology. Um, and I would say, have it, send it to your home, okay? So try, ask us a camera, uh, really depends on the, you just decide what, what type of camera, if you need a 360 fisheye type of camera or a fixed lens or a very focal or an outdoor camera, just send us a, a small mail uh, asking us for the small, uh, for the camera. Um, we uh, probably you you don't have a PUE switch at home, uh, 
so uh, we will also uh, in the trial uh, place a, a power injector, but we can send it to your home. So definitely uh, you can try it. Okay. Um, so yeah, next slide. Uh, also, an important fact is that there are many, many different trainings online. Meraki Fit um, is if you want to go further, uh, look at the different technologies of Meraki. It's a very nice community. Uh, you have also you can you you, you can also uh, game it uh, this this training. So you can you can work some some points and some rewards and so on. So. Uh, feel free to uh, really use uh, this uh, great platform uh, for training. Yeah. And then uh, we come to the key takeaways. Uh, I think um, I think the very important stuff is is, is uh, first when we saw the architecture play from uh, Rossi at the beginning it was very interesting to see the traditional architecture and you see the traditional architecture can be costly because you have the pricing on the on on the on the camera, but also the pricing on the NAS server. You have the pricing on the um, controller recorder, on the NVR, and so on. So, if you really look and you want to compare with with other vendors, really take this into account. Huh? The full spectrum of the of the cameras, uh, the solutions. On the physical security solutions, and take this uh, in comparison to the security camera of, of Meraki, which is actually only one device. Huh? Everything is managed from the cloud, and you only have the cost of the camera. Also, it's a completely secured, um, uh, completely secure from end to end. Okay, so there is no uh, point of entry of attacks uh, in a, a kind of a demilitarized zone. Uh, and so on. So everything is secure from the ground up. A lot of new uh, capabilities and functionalities. Um, really, we are happy to get you in touch with other third party vendors like Every Angle, like V App, um, where you can actually maximize the potential of the camera very much. Um, I really like the example of the social distancing kind of alarm. Uh, in the supermarket store, we saw it also uh, deployed in the UK supermarkets. Uh, it works pretty well because basically with this analytics, you have actually much more interesting uh, kind of analytics. If we compare to, to the location analytics and the analytics on the Wi-Fi, um, it can be based because we have actually multiple devices, a lot of different devices, and actually you have uh, more than actually uh, devices per people. And here with the camera, you only have one person. So you have, I, I, I believe, uh, very much uh, in information, uh, helpful information in there. Um, and then, uh, yes, uh, we can send you, if you are interested, uh, a camera for free at your home to test it. Uh, just let us know. Uh, there is also a promotion um, that goes on till the end of the year. If you buy three years of license, you get one year free. Uh, but that's not only on the camera, it's all on the full uh, spectrum of Meraki. So uh, with that, I think we can uh, go to the, we still have a few more minutes. I see that um, there are a few questions. I think I'm going to, what I'll do is I'm going to unmute everyone. And uh, I see that there are a few questions also on the chat. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let me read this. <coughs> oh, if you want to go ahead, um, Philip, with your questions. Also feel free to do that. So, Question from Philippe is to upstream the video to the cloud or archive if, of course, a big value, but a lot of customers are using VMS in a secure, securized room or specific providers who offer capacity video storage. Indeed, this is not often watched. 
if no problems, uh, video of server will be forgotten. When the scene is not rich, which a lot of events, the price of the license will be a bit overkill. Then you do, then do you propose a possibility to only work via the local storage with only cloud management features? So that's the questions uh, we have. Um, yeah, so I will say uh, that actually uh, aligns with one of the key elements that you mentioned, Loic, that it is, um, it is unfair actually to compare the camera just uh, between cameras and cameras. So for traditional systems, you have to actually uh, include the uh, Hardware expenses that we have, you have with all the factors, all the um, all the components that you have in that infrastructure. So you not only have the cameras, you have the video recorders, you have the MVRs, you have the servers. So if you do need to use the MV, for instance, just for uh, security purposes, I think it's, it's still a good value. And with the licensing, um, you still gain a lot of additional features. So as I mentioned, you will have access to 24-7 support. You will have access to firmware upgrades without any additional cost. And you don't need actually to, um, to pay for cloud archives because the camera itself, you have many things that you can work with in order to optimize the number of days uh, that the camera will record. So that can easily go to all the way to even 40 days, depending how busy is the area. And for instance, if you do create like interesting zones, you will only be recording for those specific areas. So that will essentially increase the amount of days that you can store in the camera with, without actually paying extra for the uh, for any cloud archive. And also, as I mentioned, you do have the, the RTSP that was recently released. So if you do already have the infrastructure to store locally the, um, the, uh, the video, you can certainly do so by just enabling the feature. And this feature is without any cost. So essentially, you just have to enable that on the dashboard. And then you can uh, use the, this stream uh, uh, in your infrastructure as, uh, as you want, essentially. Mm. Yeah, very good. I uh, agree with the, 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 the license also including the support, the service, the tech, uh, the hardware, next business day hardware replacement. We often forget about this. Huh? This, uh, this is actually a full service of uh, different value. Uh, there's a lot of value on the ah, license. Cool. Okay. Um, what for Dupul? There is a question? Okay. Uh, the next question from uh, Philip um, is about um, traditional customer use today solution without to pay yearly license. Meraki model is based on year on uh, on yearly license. What is the average end user price to take into account? Um, we can we can actually take this a little bit offline depending on the, on the on 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 the question on because. Basically, there will be uh, next quarter, there's gonna be a lot of uh, new uh, pricing structure with a lot of, with a much better discount. Um, so I think if I'm going to give you the discount now, um, or the pricing now, um, in two weeks, I will have to send it again. So it's going to change a lot with the new quarter uh, starting from May. Uh, but basically uh, the camera itself uh, costs the, the the starting price is around uh, 600 euros, um, but I mean, uh, with that, we, if, if if there is a, a an extra offer or, or a price indication, we can maybe take this uh, offline for the moment, and in May I will can I will give you the new pricing. Um, the third question from Philippe is: Does it exist NVR possibilities? I mean, to have a demo camera for partners. Uh, I, I believe it's NFR. Uh, I today have Meraki demo kit, full stack CMNA certificate. I could add another camera on it to replace a Mobotics model. Yeah. Um, so NFR uh, on Meraki exists, no problem whatsoever. What, uh, no, no problem whatsoever. Um, I 
believe the, the discount is roughly around a 75% uh, discount on NFR. Um, and we can definitely um, uh, send it uh, one with the NFR conditions. Yeah. Um, um, the, another question is, can you show one camera or more video on an external screen instead of using a PC? Uh, yes, I mean, certainly, one? like, the, the only thing that you require to do the live streaming is to have access to a browser. So you can certainly have even, uh, um, like, a, any, any device that can handle a browser and, and just look into the browser and you will have access to the video wall. And yeah. that is the only requirement. Yeah, you can even, there is also an application on your phone huh, that you can download, and then, uh, but you cannot create, I think, a video wall from the Miraki application on the phone, I think. Yeah, in the mobile app, the screen, you know? yeah, in the mobile app, you do have access to live streaming, but not to the video wall, as you mentioned, Lloyd. Um, mm -hmm. That is potentially uh, coming up, but at the moment, you, you will need to have access to an actual browser in order to, to see the live streaming through the video wall itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions? Uh, this is the time. <laughs> we, have, we have still have two minutes left. No questions? Okay, Jose, I think uh, we can conclude there. Uh, thank you very much for, for, your, for your time and, and, um, and presentation. And uh, thank you all for watching the, the video. Um, you'll get the slides uh, from us um, and also the recording of the session. Um, so feel free to, um, to refresh um, a little bit if needed um, on, the, on the Meraki MV cameras. And uh, with that, I will, um, uh, for the ones in Belgium, uh, I wish you a, a good lunch and uh, in one hour, a good lunch. <laughs> uh, thank you all for, for, for joining this webinar. Uh, thank you, everyone, and have a, a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye.